Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Mickey. If you're new here, I am a content creator and a registered nurse and I'm Kevin. I am a resident physician and a content creator. Am I a content creator? Sure, baby. I'm a content creator. You can be anything you want to be, okay? I'm primarily a surgery resident. Well, anyways, today we're going to be answering all things finance, how we invest, what we invest, how much debt we have, all the uncomfortable money questions that people normally don't want to answer. Before we go ahead and jump into this video, I'm actually giving away $500 to one of my subscribers thanks to our sponsor today, Credit Sesame. You'll hear a little bit more about them later on. These are the questions that you guys sent in on Instagram stories. Number one, who makes more money? Well, of course you. So like everybody in the hospital makes more money than me, I feel like. Mm -hmm. So I make like 65K maybe. So every every year that you get more experience in residency, mm -hmm. you get a little bit more money. So last year as a PGY1, the first year resident as an intern, I made like 60K. Mm -hmm. And this year I made like, they gave us like a 3% raise. For people in healthcare, it's like pretty common knowledge that residents are unfortunately at like the bottom of the totem pole in yeah. terms of the money hierarchy. But for people outside of medicine, they're like, oh, you're a doctor, like you must be making so much money. I I'm like telling people what to do and they make more money than me. Like you're putting in the orders, but yeah. they're making more money. I think most yeah. of you guys know this by now, but yes, I do make more money, which only makes sense since Kevin is currently on a resident salary, but also because I just have multiple streams of income coming from a lot of different places. And so it's obviously much easier for me to earn money when I also have more time and energy to be yes. making money. But if you're just just the nurse, don't Even make if it was just the nurse, I would still make more money. <laughs> yeah, that's true. How do you split the mortgage? So to give a little context, we did buy a house. The house is technically my house, like I did put down the down payment and it is my house. Um, but Kevin obviously is living in it and so the way that it works is basically I pay the mortgage and then Kevin pays me quote unquote rent. I do have a tenant that sometimes does Doesn't not. Pay. But it, here's the thing. The like, tenant is very good at keeping, maintaining the house. We'll, Throw the trash away. That is oh, so not true. I have well, to watch the, the dog when you're away. It's like the perfect tenant. Well, I think we have to like preface this with like, obviously we're, like, we're in a very serious relationship because if we were like more new, I think I would definitely be like, sorry, sir. Like you gotta pay up like every first of the month. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh really? Um, we never like nickel and dime each other when it comes to like buying our food or buying our groceries, mm -hmm. etc. And we have the intention to stay together, obviously. Mm -hmm. And, and Mickey so, will bill me if we separate, apparently. Yes, I've definitely told Kevin that like if something goes down the road, like you will be getting an invoice with like all of the rent you did not pay. Oh gosh. We're both financially responsible, right? And I know that like if you're not paying me, your money is going somewhere responsible, aka your retirement, like your other things. It's not like you're like going out and like gambling with the extra <laughs> money, you know? But what if I make money from gambling? You know what? Then you can also pay the rent in addition to gambling, okay? Speaking about home loans and mortgages, we all know how important it is to have a good credit score. It is a must for getting approved for a mortgage for your home, to buy a car, you name it. I've personally been building my credit since I was 18 years old and ultimately it's helped me get approved for my apartments, to buy my house. I am super excited to introduce the sponsor of today's video, which is Credit Sesame. They actually help people monitor and improve their credit. So you can open a free Sesame me cash debit account and then enable the credit builder feature. This allows the daily debit purchases that you make to be reported to the bureau so that you can build your credit history. You can check your score every day to track your growth and Credit Sesame will actually pay you cash rewards if your score goes up. They'll actually give you $10 for every 10 point increase in the first 30 days up to $100. Be sure to check out the program terms for more details. There is no credit check required so even if you don't currently have a credit card you can automatically start building your credit even without a traditional or physical credit card. In addition, they want to kickstart your financial journey by giving away $500 to one of you. So to enter the giveaway, all you have to do is to create a Sesame Cash account um, by clicking the link down below in the description box. And leave a comment on this video stating one of your personal 2022 finance goals and I will pick a winner. You can review the official terms in the description box below. Good, Good luck. luck. This is one of our most commonly asked questions. What do you currently invest in? And investing is still relatively new to both of us. I've really become interested in it in the last like two years or so. And Kevin? 
What is the goal of investing? I guess that's my question for you. I think it's important for people to understand. My ultimate goal is fire. I'm all about the fire movement, financial independence and retire early. For me, I'm all about like the long haul and the long game. I'm not, I know that I'm not an expert day trader. I know that I'm gonna be really stressed looking at the day to day numbers. And so my method is always to buy and hold. Yeah, I guess the main thing for investment is to stratify your risk right? Like you have a certain amount of money that you want to protect mm -hmm. and certain things, you know, you want to make sure that you're not behind the curve in front of other people so you don't become poor even though you have money. Right. You so know, like wanna... if you have, you know, $100 in the bank, but with inflation going up and up and up, then... It's worth less every year, right? Exactly. And even though you haven't touched it or done anything. You so investing try... really is like protecting yourself. A lot of people, I think, think of it as this very risky thing. Mm -hmm. um, but if you do it correctly, it's actually very much objective. Yeah. And I don't think either of us are like, it's going to say investment's going to, going to make us like, like super, super rich. I think maybe, I don't know. That's I think it could. <laughs> maybe. But I think like, the goal is a little bit more realistic. Hopefully beat the trends or at least stay with it. You go first. You can take I'll your time. Okay, I'm going okay. to take a nap or something. <laughs> I've made a little list and I know it sounds like a lot, but like they are honestly like things that have just built up over the last couple years and compared to other investors, like this is still very much like beginner level. I have my 401k, so this is through work and it just gets taken out of my paycheck. There is a maximum amount, I believe it's 19.5. This year might be a little bit higher, but that's how much that I invest every year. I always max it out. Number two, I have my SEP IRA. This is through my own business. Number three, I have my Roth IRA. And if you make above a certain threshold, then you have to use the backdoor method, but you can still have a Roth. Number four, I've got the Series I bonds. So these are the government um, I bonds that are currently and 9.62% interest. Um, so basically to fight inflation and very safe because they're from the US Treasury. Okay, number five, I have stocks. So I have these on like a recurring investment every week, but I mainly invest in VFIX, which is the Vanguard 500 index fund. Um, and then the VTIAX, which is the Vanguard Total International Stock Index Fund. I usually buy those at a 65-35 split. I have a little bit of crypto. This is less than 5%, really just money that, you know, if it disappears one day, I wouldn't be that bummed about it. I honestly just don't know enough about crypto to be investing more, but I am starting to learn more. I also have high yield municipal bonds. So these um, I purchased a long time ago, like out of high, not high school, out of college. <laughs> I also have some REITs, which are real estate investment trusts. And then finally I have the house that I currently live in. What about your investment? investment in me and the dog and your happiness or this is all just money yeah this is all just money. you're my biggest most successful investment thus investment far without babe. any fruitful fruit Fruit. The fruit is coming. The fruit is coming. Yeah. That's it. We get a merch that says the, the fruit, fruit is, is coming. coming. What fruit should be our logo? Should be apple? Should we do it? What fruit is it? I don't grape, know. Grape? Cherry? Grape? Like grape? Like grape? But like grape. So that's my investments. So what do you invest in? Okay. So most of all of my, actually like all of my investments are in retirement funds. So my work, their 401k slash 403b, which is a nonprofit version of that, will match 5% of my salary to that. So I definitely will do that because then it's like double the worth. Mm -hmm. So that's pre-tax. It's half target fund and half into like a high cap index fund. Mm -hmm. My work also lets me do a 403b Roth. So this is post-tax. And normally there's like the 20K limit and I don't think I'm gonna surpass the 20K limit, but I put a decent amount of money that I can into that post-tax fund. And that is also in the same target fund and large cap mm -hmm. um, index. So, you know, I have like a tiny, like little account where I put like $500 into investments just to s like individual stocks, just yeah, to like start learning, learning and seeing how the, the market plays out. That's and most importantly, it. you invest in lucky you invest in yourself I'll nothing can beat myself. that well that's that's why i have all the student loans <laughs> technically that's an investment to myself how much debt do we have so i'm in a buttload of debt now because i just bought a house um this beautiful home but other than the mortgage debt i do not have any credit card debt or any um student loans i've talked about this extensively i'll just pop up a little um graphic for why i don't have any student loans because i've explained this extensively multiple times i have like a hundred and a little bit more than 100k of student loans which is actually not that bad considering 
I went to undergrad and medical school. How much of that is undergrad and how much of it is medical school? Oh, like 120 of it is like medical, medical school. school. <laughs> Parents helped me through undergrad. Yeah, I don't have any other loans. I don't have credit card debt. My cars I bought. So. And then you have a lovely... Lovely lady who can help me with the uh, pay the rent. It's very cheap. How do we split our daily expenses? Culturally, like growing up, like, you know, our parents are always people to like fight for the bill, whatever. And so we don't like to have instances where like every single thing we're like, okay, you owe me this much, you owe me that much. So like with any transaction, I will either foot the whole thing or Kevin will foot the whole thing. I have a couple of categories for like the things, the daily expenses that people normally have. And we'll just go through and talk about like how we normally pay for them. Groceries. I think most of the time I have a card that I put all the groceries on. So, yeah, generally yeah. Kevin will pay for the groceries, but um, I do have like an affiliate link that I earn money from. And so like some of our groceries do come from our affiliate income. Eating out, mostly I pay for eating out because we do put this on the business credit card. When we do eat out, it's typically a business expense because we are discussing business activities while we are eating. Car slash gas. That's my area of expertise. Yes, I do not like pumping gas or going to gas stations. Kevin will foot the gas bill, which is really expensive Wait, right now. Wait, but we've been charging Kara a lot because the gas is so expensive. Yes, we have been charging Kara. Mm -hmm. Travel slash vacations. Sugar mama. I think you pay for all the planning stuff, like the hotels and things, and then with all the buying, like the food and stuff, I pay for because that's, that's very fair. Like when we get there. That's very fair. I pay for the flights, the hotels, the cars. Yeah, like, we eat expensive food and yeah. The thing is like, I don't want to be missing out on adventures because I would Kevin's stay on a resident at the, salary. I would stay at the hostels and things. Yeah, so. I, 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 I recommended we stay in this nice hostel in Oh my God, Kevin Hawaii. recommended we stay in a one star hotel. It looked nice. It was in a good location. In a one star hotel. I was terrified. It's not, it's not because it's a one star hotel. It's like the safety issue and everything, babe. It looked fine. It was too much. It so yes, I, I did put the, put the bill on, on but those. But I did find the hotel with a nice deal. Thank you for that. Yes. Home improvement slash other like home items. I would say in general, I pay for the furniture. I pay for like the electronics, um, all the like bigger purchases, but I like our system because the little stuff, you take care of all the stuff. Like I obviously make the big purchases, but like the little stuff I never have to worry about. Or like this thing doesn't work mm -hmm. and you like close your eyes and you open them and this car, this thing works again. Mm -hmm. I was really, really um, moved when we were dating initially and my refrigerator, like the door opened on the wrong side. It was like opening the wrong way and Kevin like switched it for me. Dude, I had to go to Home Depot to buy a uh, screwdriver. As our relationship has progressed, we have become more lenient with the way that we spend our money. Like, I think it was definitely more evenly split earlier on in the relationship. Would you say that? Yes. I mean, Mickey's definitely, you know, doing the most, but, you know, I'm contributing as much as I can with my lovely salary. Yeah. And I, I never I like think, blame you for it. I think it, Mickey understands if I made any more money that I would be the same way. That's, that's the thing. That's the intention. Like if, right. I don't know. if you made much more money, I know Kevin would also contribute more. So I'm okay with it not being like a 50, 50 mm -hmm. split. It doesn't make sense. Like our incomes are not 50, 50. So it's kind of unfair for Kevin if it was also 50, 50. Do you have any joint accounts? We do not currently have any joint accounts. This is so much work. The thing is that I think that we would just keep everything separate and then maybe we'll have Maybe we'll have like one joint account for us. I think we'll have us, one like... for like when we, if we have a kid or something, we put all like the, I don't know. I know all of Mickey's passwords so I can be her. <laughs> that is true. We forgot to answer one question. Who pays for the dog? So Lucky is actually self-sustaining. He pays for all of his own bills. Um, From Lucky, his like one to two sponsorships a year. Yes, he does get a couple brand deal offers and he does self-sustain and pay for all of his vet bills, his treats and his snacks and things like that. Lucky has made more than Kevin. In one month? In some months. Wow. Okay, that is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget you're a 10 out of 10. Don't let anyone ever make you feel otherwise. Bye bye. Bye. Oh,